Welcome to r slash pro revenge where an employee screws his lying boss out of $35,000. Throw away for soon to be very obvious reasons. I have generalized every aspect of this story to keep it anonymous. I hope you enjoy reading about my experience. I am not willing to offer any more information or evidence for this so just take it for what it is. Also the point of this story isn't to brag over money but to share my revenge plan and execution. Anyways, I work in software development using very in-demand and complex frameworks and tools. The average salary doing what I do in my area is around $110,000 a year for a relatively simple low-level job. By this, I mean a position where the employee does not have major responsibilities, works as part of a much larger team, etc. I worked on-site and then remotely as a contractor for three years for a company hereafter named the company while I was at university. As a contractor, I was the only developer in the entire company of a few hundred people and was solely responsible for all systems, development, testing, etc. This includes databases, web servers, and much more. This seems like a lot. It was. But I had full control of my environment and autonomy. I worked on the software projects that I wanted to and felt would have the most impact. During that period of remote work, upper management was changed. After I completed my schooling, I received an offer from the company for $70,000. I knew this was below what I should be making, but I also realized the following. I had full autonomy in my environment. I had some gaps in my skill set. By staying in this environment, I could fill in those gaps and very easily prepare to transition to another higher paying job. So new management and I reached an agreement. I would accept a salary of $72,000 and then after six months time, we would meet to go over my salary and it would be increased by at least 15%. This was included in my offer letter, which both new management and I signed. Fast forward to six months later, I have now filled every gap in my skill set and expanded on it to increase my skill set even more. The six month marker rolls by and nothing happens. I send new management repeated meeting requests and they are ignored. Three weeks into the sixth month, I go to HR and raise the issue. HR turns ghost white and makes the meeting happen. That afternoon, new management comes into my office and offers me a 1% raise. Yes, that is correct. 1%. I kept my cool though and reminded them that I was guaranteed at least 15% due to our agreement. New management completely denied making this agreement and repeated their previous offer. I brought out my offer letter with both of our signatures on it and they started backpedaling. They said they would talk and get back to me. I made it very clear that if I did not receive the agreed upon amount, we would have a problem. Fast forward to two weeks later. New management invites me into their offices. I am then offered a 6% raise. They try to make excuses about budget restrictions, fairness to other employees, whatever they could think of. I knew then I had these options. One, quit. Two, demand the 15%, possibly get it, but severely damage my relationship with new management. Three, accept the 6% raise and maintain a strong positive relationship with new management, allowing me to blindside them later. The wheels in my mind spinning, I agreed to the 6% raise. At that moment, I decided what I would do. I would take the raise, use the remainder of my time there to look for another job, and leave. A few months passes though, and my plan expanded. I began implementing the most cutting edge technology using the most modern frameworks, upgrading everything I could as aggressively as I could. Of course, this provided immense benefit to the company. That was the plan. I entrenched myself in every system in every way possible, increased the skill floor for my position as high as I could get it, and left. Four months after I accepted the raise of 6%, I accepted an offer for a salary of $130,000 at another company. I put my two weeks notice in at the company and all heck broke loose. New management knew they had messed up and they were completely blindsided that I was unhappy with my position. Since I had graciously accepted the 6%, they thought they were off the hook. With me, I took all knowledge of almost every one of their systems. New management freaked out. So I did what any capitalist would do. I offered to come back as a remote contractor for 200 bucks an hour. They had no choice but to accept. 
So after the last few months, I have been charging them 200 bucks an hour to do the exact same thing that I was previously doing for significantly less. Now, instead of being out a few thousand dollars a year due to my raise, they've been outed over $35,000 in a few months with no end in sight. I even hired one of my good friends to help fill the hours. The money is nice, but the look on new management's faces when this played out was priceless. It was the sweetest revenge of my life. So in case you're curious, I did the math. Originally, OP was making about $36 per hour. If he had gotten his 15% raise, that would have brought him up to about $41 per hour. But with this pro revenge, he brought it up to $200 per hour, which is roughly five times the amount they would have been paying him. My first husband was not a very nice man. For six years, I was belittled and basically a baby factory for him. He was a fantastic father, but a horrible husband. After he finally got his heirs, I was then treated even worse until I finally woke up and decided to leave his butts. This revenge story is not about him. I just had to set the scene. I moved out from my house, taking just my clothes, the car, 4K value, no more, and the computer. I had nothing. Stayed at a girlfriend's for a couple of weeks before I was able to line up a sucky townhouse with roommates. I had no furniture, and my bed was a cat pee smelling free couch I was able to score. I wound up having three to four jobs, with one of them being full time, and once a week I would not even be able to sleep a night between jobs, meaning having to stay up for almost 48 hours. Now, fast forward one year. My divorce was finalized and I had fulfilled my year's lease for the townhouse. By this time from all my hard work, I had furnished the home, my bedroom, and my kids' room when they would be with me for visitation. The scumbag landlord was a nice-ish landlord during the time of my tenancy, and I was a good tenant, never being late with my rents. Although I had roommates, I was the sole name on the lease. Landlord would show up often with some guys that he had to work on something like plumbing tests or whatever excuse he could come up with just so he could be all creepy and hang around trying to converse with me with mild sexual undertones that made me quite uneasy at times. Finally, the lease was fulfilled and I was now onto a month to month contract to which at that time I was ready to move out of this sucky townhouse and found a great house in the mountains nearby. And I was simply thrilled now that I had got my feet on the ground and can afford a bit better than slum living. My lease stated that I had to give one month's notice in order to move out. Unfortunately, I was able to get the house I was to move into for the next month, only three weeks away. I sent an email to my landlord stating that I intend on moving out at the end of this month, in three weeks, and he can try to find another tenant. But I did state that if he didn't find a tenant, I would still fulfill my legal obligation and pay next month's rent. Within one week, two weeks before I was to move out, he emailed me back and stated that was very generous of my offer, but he was able to find a new tenant for the beginning of next month and I would be off the hook. He even tipped his hand by stating that he had already collected a deposit from them. Now, something happened within a couple days after that, which was no fault of my own, nor my roommates. The townhouse came with its own appliances, fridge, oven, etc., including a clothes washer and dryer on the main level. My roommate had put a load of laundry in and went to the living room to have a nap. He awoke to find that the washer had malfunctioned with a sensory switch, which never stopped the water fill stage, and there was an inch of water in the kitchen and living room. He splashed through the water to turn off the washer and called me to come and help deal with this. I was just getting off of work and I whipped home to assess the damage. It was bad. There was standing water on top of the living room carpet and a good inch of water in the whole kitchen. I called landlord and told him the issue. By the time landlord showed up, I had already got most of the standing water out with the help of my roommate and friends that showed up with the shop vacs. Landlord didn't seem too upset, which was surprising for me and had an appliance repairman come to look at the washer. The repairman even said, yup, here's the culprit, and showed how the dial would stick on the fill stage and wouldn't click over to the agitate stage. After replacing Placing the dial and lubricating the whole deal, he left. The next week was chaos as I was busy trying to pack and landlord had insurance guys in assessing and workers taking out the carpet and cutting two feet worth of the lower drywall of the whole main level. 
the day of the move, though I was still supposed to be there for a couple more days. Landlord had let himself in as movers were moving out my stuff with a camera going around taking pictures of everything. I honestly thought that it was for his insurance claims, etc. I actually felt bad for him, I'm too nice, and told him that I would not ask for any of my deposit back. And he responded in front of the loading crew and my roommate, Thank you, that's very generous of you. We parted ways, and I thought that was that. I was wrong. Two weeks into my new home location, Landlord showed up on my doorstep with a summons to appear in arbitration because he was suing me? What? On what grounds? He stated it's all in this paperwork and handed me a manila envelope with 18 pages of everything he was charging me with. All including photos. Now I know why he was going around taking pics. Nickel and diming me on everything from a bent Venetian blind that was like that when I had moved in and some scuffs on the walls, etc, etc. But then he also wanted me to pay his insurance deductible and that following month's rent. He claimed that the tenants that he had lined up backed out at the last minute, claiming that they didn't think the place would be ready in time with the new drywall and paint and so on. So he still wanted me to pay the month's rent. Really? F this nonsense. I knew I was more than generous of giving him my whole deposit and then for him to come back and sue me for thousands? He was not only claiming the damages caused by the flood, but improvements he needed to do that should never be or have been my responsibility in the first place. Even cracks in the living room wall that was from the building settling. How should I be responsible for that? Even new lighting, faucets, etc. All mainly on the accusation that I was negligent. I wasn't going to have that. I know this was a slummy townhouse complex and most of his tenants were just welfare cases and maybe he could get away with this with others, but not me. No way. I had just got out of a marriage that made me feel insignificant and had horrible self-esteem. But now I had my dignity and felt strong for the first time in a long time. No way I was going to let any more garbage happen to me without my doing something about it. I had 10 days before the date of my arbitration meeting. I immediately got to work, first getting a signed deposition from the very repairman that had showed up that day, stating that the appliance was quite in need of maintenance work and the last time he had done any maintenance for him was almost five years before. From thoroughly reviewing my rental contract and local laws, landlord is obligated to have all appliances maintained and serviced every year. I had also talked to some of the other tenants and had heard that this wasn't the first time Landlord had sued tenants after the fact. I hunted them down and got sworn statements from them also. Unfortunately for them, they didn't know what to do and mostly didn't show up at arbitration, hence Landlord winning by default. No way, I was not going to let him do this to me. I then drew up a rebuttal to each and every claim he had, including photos from the year that I had lived there, printed out all my email correspondence, and even convinced my ex-roommate and one of the movers that had heard my interaction with Landlord about him stating how generous it was of me letting him keep my whole deposit, which was a significant amount to come. Day of Arbitration I dressed up in my power suit and with my ex-roommate and worker in towed showed up at the meeting. Now, in Canada, arbitration is not held in a courtroom per se, but is still held at the courthouse in a conference room with a judge. Since Landlord was the plaintiff, he got to go first with his case. He spent over 40 minutes going over everything and I sat quietly until he finished. Once he finished, I then hauled out the rebuttal in multiple copies, handed to the judge, to landlord, and anyone else that wished to have one, and I quickly went over each point. Landlord was irate and interrupted almost every second sentence I spoke. Sounds like you go. I would pause the moment he would start talking and say sweetly, I was quiet and polite during your time to present your case. I hope you grant me the same respect. Landlord started to get red in the face, especially when I got to the deposition of the maintenance worker for the appliance. I included with that the Tenancy and Landlord Act sections pertaining to appliance maintenance and stated that this was the only record of maintenance that had occurred. And unless he can come up with more recent records from perhaps another company, it was over five years since anything had been looked at. 
With my defense, I had also countered that I would like my deposit back and my day's pay from work since I had to take that day off to go to this meeting. The judge then made his statement, and I will always remember this for the rest of my life. He stated that first, he was very impressed in my presentation and that I obviously have a good handle on things and can tell that my nature is of kindness and respect, especially with photos of how I had the townhouse furnished and clean and pride in whatever home I would live in. Bottom line, not only did I win my case, I wound up having landlord owing me over 80% of my deposit back, including interest. Landlord's face was priceless. The judge then proceeded to tell landlord that they will be reviewing again all of his previous filings, and if there was enough evidence of harassment, he would be reported to the board of landlords and tenants. I don't really know if anything came out of that. Now, I walked away that day feeling on top of the world, completely justified, and he got a taste of his own medicine. But it didn't stop there. Oh no. Knowing that this guy has a history of suing tenants, I printed up my final results and the judge's signature and gave a copy to each and every tenant in that complex. I wanted to warn everyone of his practices and to keep notes, photos, etc. so that he couldn't do that to them. But I didn't stop there. He still now owed me money, hee <laughs> hee, and I asked repeatedly for the payment. He never responded. He had until a certain day to pay me back my deposit, and on that day, I had gone to his house. I looked up his residence under public records as he is a landlord and had to file under a certain address, and knocked on the door. He didn't answer, though I knew he was home. I rang the bell a few more times and knocked loudly. He then turned his house alarm on, which at first startled me, but quickly turned to humor seeing how much of a wussy this bully turned out to be. I then yelled out loud enough that I am not going anywhere. He yelled out, get off my property or I will call the police. Okay, no problem. I got off the property, but camped out on the front sidewalk. I had a fold-up chair, a cooler with water and sodas, a few sandwiches, and all my paperwork with me. I was set to stay there forever. I then would tell anyone that would walk by, already there were some people there from the house alarm fiasco, about how I was a tenant and he wrongfully sued me and that I have a claim against him, and he now owes me money. I let anyone look at the paperwork just to back up my claim. The police did show up. They first went to talk to landlord and he was claiming that I was harassing him, slandering him, and wouldn't leave his property. I was on public property, the sidewalk, and it isn't slander if it's true, of which I had all my court signed paperwork to back me up. I wasn't disturbing the peace, I was simply and quietly seated outside his home and just talking to neighbors about his actions. He was out yelling that I need to leave, and I quietly stated that I would be happy to leave once I am paid what he was legally obligated to by that date. I was not going to leave before I got the money in my hand, and I was more than willing to stay there and tell anyone that would listen to me why I was camped out. The police stated that I wasn't doing anything wrong, that it's public property, I wasn't disturbing the peace, and it isn't slander if it's true. Finally, after an hour of landlord yelling on his front lawn at the policeman, and at me of course, did his wife come out with the money. She handed the money to the police, who in turn handed the money to me, and signed off documenting final payment was complete. I sweetly smiled, thanked the police deeply, and went home. I have no idea whatever happened to landlord, and if he is still pulling stuff like this on others, but I hope that I help put the fear of God in him, and that he just can't screw with people because eventually it will come back to bite him in the butt. Sometimes nice guys or girls finish last, but with patience they can finish with a win. That was r slash pro revenge, and this is r slash puppy bloopers. That afternoon, that afternoon, that that, that afternoon <laughs> I know this is cute, but I'm behind schedule today. I really am behind schedule today. I would appreciate it if you would just go chew on your toy or something and let me work, dog. You're so cute though. You're so cute though. <clears throat> that afternoon. You go. That afternoon. 
You won't even let me finish the sentence. Okay. That afternoon. <laughs> that afternoon, new management comes into my office. <laughs> Dog. Dog. What do you want? Don't look at me like that. You're breaking my heart. Okay, come on. Come on. Come on up. Come on up. Let's go pal. Let's go. Oh, okay. Okay. You gotta be peaceful this time, though. You gotta be peaceful. Bonk, bonk your head on my desk. Are you okay, Pooch? 